right, the next techniques we're, we're, technique we're going to talk about is alternating maces. And for white belt to yellow belt, the, uh, this technique teaches several things. One of the initial things it teaches is how to go from a neutral bow to a forward bow and back to a neutral bow. So that's an important thing for white belts going to yellow belt to initially learn. It's also teaching them how to have a more of an active check. In delayed sword, and also you see with sword of destruction, it's more of a positional check there just in case. Um, if it were punch, it could be used. But in alternating maces, we're actually making it a hands-on kind of a check that's a little more active than the other. So the attack is coming in for a low two-hand push. So initially, it's going to look one, two, three. From the other side. One, two, three. First thing, when the push comes in, we're going to do an inward, downward, um, I'm sorry, an inward block at a downward angle. So it's the same as an inward block, but we're doing it at a downward angle, sort of like chopping wood, if you've ever done that, most of us haven't, but we get the idea. So we're going to be doing an inward, downward block, which would be coming right across the radial nerve, hopefully with a little bit of frictional pull, which would pull them in a little bit closer as they strike down. Then this hand that was a block now becomes a check. So you want to have hands on to keep your eye up, to keep him from putting his hands up to his face or worse, to my face. So from here, we're going to check. Left hand is going to do a forward bow at the same time you deliver a punch right to the diaphragm. From here, we're going to be doing a slightly angled punch because that area is slightly angled. We want to hit right on the diaphragm, causing him to collapse his height. And again, we want to check height, width, and depth whenever possible. So from here, we're also going to come down checking again as we shift into a right neutral bow. The right hand, it's almost as if you're pulling something out of your pocket. It's going to point your elbow at the target, back knuckle, and retract. Important thing to teach all level belt, belt levels, but especially in the early stages, is what goes out must come back, usually in the same fashion, unless it continues on the same path. Something that's going to do a scream stomp is not going to retract in the same way, but it's going to continue along the same path. A back knuckle, what goes out, must come back, usually in the same fashion. So looking at it again from the other side, if the push comes back, inward and downward block at the same time, again using marriage of gravity, checking down, blocking, checking, turn, forward bow, make sure you are leaning a 60 40, 60%. Forwarding the back, leaning into the front leg. Back leg is locked, punching in, collapsing him further. Checking the hands again to keep him from going to his stomach where it might hurt or somewhere else more dangerous. As something is flipping out of your pocket here, pointing the elbow at the target, back knuckle, and back. And that is alternating maces, maces being this. There's something else? Um, so when it's the two hands are coming at you, looking like a push, the other thing that you can also think that it would be is maybe a low grab to the waist. And for children, it's going to be more prevalent in that case because it's easier to come up on the children and grab them at the waist and do something like that in that aspect. So either way, two hands coming in low, push or grab at the waist. Thank you.